Hello, welcome to Spotlight on Saris. My name is Laura Higgs. Today is October the 19th, 2023, and we're here with Lynn Yance, who's going to talk to us about the Saris Beautification Group. Welcome, Lynn. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Yes. My so, how, uh, how long has the Saris Beautification been operating? Saris Beautification started about 26 years ago, and we still have some of our original members planting flowers. Really? Good. Yeah. 26 years ago. Yes. Oh, wow. Long, long time. So, so um, you have a committee, though. So what does the committee do? Um, the committee is a board of about 13 members, and we meet once a month during the busy season. And we organize the helpers and make sure the beds are ready and that the flowers are, are all there for pickup. Okay. At Sadler's Greenhouse. Okay. So how many people get involved each year? We have about 40 people planting. Really, eh? Uh, around town in the different planters. Yeah. And... Um, so you don't have to be on the committee to help. You They, they can uh, be a, a planter or someone, or friends of the beautification, but they don't have to come to all the meetings no. necessarily. That's no. good. We have an original board, and um, and some people just want to plant and enjoy the outdoors yeah so for sure but 40 people that's really good um, are they all volunteers or does anybody get paid in that the only person that gets paid is the student that is hired through a, a student grant through oh, right. the town of service that's okay it gives somebody a job right the kids need jobs and that student waters flowers five days a week right and uh, it's from as soon as they get out of school in June until uh, they go back to school in September. Nice, nice, okay. Uh, when does everything get going in the spring and, and how does that take place? In early May, we start uh, the canna lilies and we put them into pots. There's about three dozen of them and get them started ahead of time and uh, the town crew then puts the heavy uh, cement planters around town where they oh, yeah, need they, to be. They pick them up th for the winter, right? Right. Yeah. Oh. So that they don't interfere with snow removal. Right. And then we dig up the soil and the planters and add soil where we need to. And we plant the flowers uh, about mid-June. Mid-June. Okay. So fertilizer is added to the water every time we water, and then we start um, weeding and deadheading uh, where we need to. See, that's where it's good to have 40 people, because that's an ongoing task, basically. And every summer, yeah, every summer you have to deadhead in order to get beautiful blooms, and uh, anybody's welcome to, if they see that deadheading needs doing they're welcome to help out if they know oh, what they're okay. doing well that's yeah. good oh, okay so what um who picks out the types and the colors of the flowers part of our um, beautification committee um about four usually volunteer to pick out the flowers and we do that in october um so that saddlers can get them in mm -hmm. And we can we have a better chance of getting our colors and types that you want. Yeah, right. And then sometimes you pick colors and types depending on what's happening for the year. Yes. You know, depending what celebrations are going on. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. so what I thought. And we have to be careful. Uh, marigolds are a favorite, and so are um, salvias because the deer don't like them as much right. as they like petunias and uh -huh. things so we use a lot of marigolds in our selections yeah it keeps them away for sure so what kind of timeline is involved for volunteers to help out some volunteers only want to go out and plant some want to do the whole nine yards and go out and plant and weed and deadhead um, we have work bees for people that um, or for the bigger flower beds that we have to look after, like at Pavel the Peacock and and the island and so on. We never work more than an hour and a half at a 
time okay. to do this. We seem to be able to do it that way. Um, we have a sorority group doing the the big bed at the island this year, and they were a tremendous help. It freed up a lot of my time to do other things. Oh, so they went and looked after that the island there. Yeah, hmm. and then in the fall. We uh, clean up the flowers and dig up the cannas and store them and get ready for next year. Wow. Uh, do you have any big projects on the go? I know last year there was the Pavel the Peacock. Last year we had Pavel the Peacock, who is about 14 feet tall. Mm -hmm. And he's covered in feathers, and they're all stainless steel, so he will never rust. Mm -hmm. And uh, we planted about 70 dozen petunias to create the tail on him. And um, this year we added lights and tinted them green for nighttime viewing. And it's mm. quite pretty at night to nice. go down and see Pavel. Oh, very nice. And uh, we're recuperating after last year because that was a was tremendously a big, big project. It was absolutely yeah. big, yeah. Um, What's the cost to maintain all the flowers? The town of Suris allots us money for flowers every year. And we spend our bank account money to replace planters that are broken and liners and such, lights and miscellaneous. And um, if we can come up with a new project to enhance our community, we like to do that also. Mm -hmm, for sure. We're looking at about five to seven thousand dollars worth of flowers. Really? Every year. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So how do you come up with that money? We do a fundraiser every year okay. and uh, the last two years we've done a wine survivor which it's a ladies night and uh, we sell tickets and they also bring a bottle of wine with them to the event. And um, then we draw names out of the hat. And if your name is drawn and you want to get your name put back in, you can do that for $5 and you can do that for three times. And then um, the winners at the end of the night, second and third prize winners get like 20 bottles of wine and the top uh, last one to survive gets about 30 bottles of wine. Wow, yeah. So it's well received mm -hmm. and ladies have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I had a shift this uh, this year, so I wasn't able to go. I was working a shift, so, but uh, it was, uh, I went last year and it was a fun event. Yeah. A lot of and fun. And the more it gets around that we're doing this every fall, um, the Tickets are limited, so people are going to learn to get their tickets early, early yeah. so that they can get in on it. Yeah, and some people are getting a big, ta a full table, and then just finding their friends and yes, yeah, yeah, just buying the table. And it's not a long event. It's uh, it starts at seven and it's done by nine. Mm -hmm. So, um, ladies are quite happy to go out for a few hours and. Mm -hmm. Just have a few laughs and a few drinks and absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so that's your big fundraiser for your um, to keep up with your projects and stuff. What happens when the summer is over? We try and leave the flowers blooming until after Thanksgiving. Uh, we've been lucky the last few years that there hasn't been a frost early, mm -hmm. and then we pull the flowers up and dig the cannas and clean up the beds and store some of the cannas for next year. And saddlers take down the petunia tree on the island. Ah. The hanging baskets are taken down and the town crew then takes the heavy planters back to the shop to store them for okay. the winter. The hanging baskets, are they something that the that saddlers um, get ready for you? Yes, they. there's 28 hanging baskets. Mm -hmm and they um, plant them ahead of time so that they're ready when they are hung, they look nice already. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So all those pots go back to them to do for next year? Yes. Great. Yes. Great. Well, they do look beautiful. 
Yeah, for sure. Is um, is that uh, everything until spring? Like, but you guys usually meet and have, make some plans. You said in October you'd pick out your colors. We pick out the colors. We have a final meeting in the end of October, and then uh, the end of November, the poinsettia tree is decorated uptown mm -hmm. and um, on the island, and. Um, all the brackets are filled with poinsettias. The star goes on top and the lights hang down. And uh, it looks very pretty when you drive through town and yeah. see the poinsettias. Yeah, I was filming the Santa Claus Parade one year from the balcony over there and I got lots of good uh, pictures of, of the tree for sure on yeah. the island. It looked very nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what can we expect for colors next year? Have you got a plan? We've already picked out our flowers for next year, and we will treat you with some interesting oranges and purples, Ooh. but not too drastic. The orange petunias I was hoping to use are quite costly because they're purchased individually, not in four or six packs. Oh, really? So, um, but orange is a new petunia color, mm -hmm. and um, they're very different, and and I think they're gonna look gorgeous. Yeah, I yeah. love the oranges. I usually have daylilies, the orange daylilies in my yard and yeah. love the orange colors. Yeah. Good. Okay, so oranges and purples. Okay, any special events uh, for next year? Have you got anything lined up? We're working on a special event. I can't say too much about it be ah. um, because we haven't finalized it, but every year we try and do something and I think next year will be a special dedication. So, ah. yeah. Okay. We're looking forward to that. Good. Yeah. Very good. Well, your last dedication you had was very well attended and yes, and uh, enjoyed by everyone. For yes. Sure. Yes. That's great. Okay. Great. Well, thanks for coming in, Lynn. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much for your work and your team's work on the Service Beautification Committee. The committee is just amazing. We all have fun and and we all get together and have lots of laughs and it's a fun group to work with. Well, you make Service look beautiful too. Thank so you. So fun and beautiful. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for joining us here at Spotlight and Service. Have a wonderful rest of your day.